joining me now is one of the members of Congress who was in that election security briefing last week, Democratic Congressman Danny Heck of Washington. And Congressman Heck, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, I want to get right to that meeting. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to get right to that meeting. What I'm interested in knowing about your Republican colleagues, and I know that there's limits on what you can say about what you all were told, but what seemed to be their response? Was their response, in your view, one of saying, this is a threat, we take it seriously, or one of saying, we don't want to hear this, this only could hurt Republicans, don't tell us? Well, Joy, thanks for the question. Obviously, as you indicated, I can neither confirm nor deny anything that went on in that meeting. And I'm not one to characterize the utterances of my colleagues within a classified setting. However, the past three years have been instructive enough, have they not? After all, we're really in a same song, same verse circumstance here. The Mueller report clearly documented that the Russians interfered in our elections in furtherance of Donald Trump and candidates' election. And I have said repeatedly over the last three years when asked, do I think the Russians will be back? My response is, back? I don't believe they ever left. And so that is what it is. Furthermore, as outrageous as this is, as violative as, as it is of our national security, the fact of the matter is, the plain fact of the matter, cold-blooded, clear-eyed fact of the matter is, the remedy is November. Well, well, I mean, the remedy is November if it's a free and fair election. Uh, let me just ask you this question as somebody who sits on the Intelligence Committee uh, in the House. Is it true that, in general, Republicans benefited more and do benefit more from Russian interference than Democrats? Well, they certainly did in the year 2016 when the Russians' effort was to elect President Trump and the down ballot benefit okay. of that. But listen, we have to be honest with ourselves, Joy, about this as well. The Russians also take it as an important objective to divide us and to sow discontent and disunity. And frankly, and I'm going to put this bluntly, as a Democrat and somebody who watched the presidential debate on Wednesday night, it seems as though we don't need a whole lot of help in that regard, because what I saw was more akin to a middle school food fight than it was an honest debate about a future direction for our country and a vision for it and a strong appeal to our better angels. But, sir, you know, with all due respect, and, you know, I have a great deal of respect for you um, for what you do as a, as, a, as a political leader, it wouldn't help if the Democrats were 100 percent unified if we're going into an election in which a foreign country is putting its thumb on the scale and attempting to help the party in power in the United States Senate and the, per the party that now holds the White House to stay in. You know, if Democrats were 100 percent unified, but Russia still attacks our election and Republicans let them in and let them help and take their help, then we're not just talking about Donald Trump being a problem. We're talking about an entire political party that is accepting foreign help. Unity isn't going to stop that. There has to be action. Is there any action Democrats can take to stop that? Well, Joy, your point is well taken. The fact of the matter is that the only action and remedy that I had available to me was to vote for only the third time in the history of our great republic to impeach Donald Trump. And that did not succeed. So as a consequence, we are going to have to seek remedy in November. And yes, I do believe that if we become more unified at some point soon, I hope, then we're going to have a better chance to power through the fact that a foreign government is putting their thumb on the scales. Let's ask about um, the, the Senator Sanders news as well. Um, back during the, as the Mueller report came out, those of us who read it will remember that the Mueller report said the following about Senator Sanders. By February 2016, internal internet research agency documents referred to support for the Trump campaign and opposition to candidate Clinton. Main idea, use any opportunity to criticize Hillary Clinton and the rest and the rest, except Sanders and Trump. We support them. We now know that Senator Sanders was briefed that Russia is attempting to come in and help him as well. His statement was the following. I don't care, frankly, who Putin wants to be president. My message to Putin is clear. Stay out of American elections, and as president, I'll make sure that you do. Are you concerned now that Russia is playing a two-part strategy, much as they did uh, in the French elections, to also help the potential Democratic nominee? Joy, I've never stopped being concerned about Russia's interference in our election. It literally keeps me up at night. But oh, by the way, let's be clear. I, I don't have a dog in this fight. I haven't publicly endorsed any candidate. I did have an opportunity to see Senator Sanders' comment 
about the briefing he received in Russian interference in the 2020 election. And I found him to be extremely authentic. Uh, and as a matter of fact, while I don't know him well, I would assert this categorically. You will never see Senator Sanders call a press conference and actively and openly solicit Russian interference in our election as we did candidate Trump in 2016, nor will you ever see staff members on his behalf repeatedly meeting with multiple parties on behalf of the Russian government as you did candidate Trump. That is a, a, a distinct difference for sure. Uh, Congressman Danny Heck, thank you very much. Danny Heck, thank you very much, sir. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.